Hey there, welcome to Financial Wellness University. I am Joe Brown, your teacher and your host on this journey of financial wellness. If you are a subscriber, I'd like to thank you for returning to the channel. If you are not and you are interested in financial wellness, please hit that subscribe button. Um, it, if it is not there right now on the screen, it will appear as you're watching the video. And also, before you uh, finish, hit that like button so more people will uh, be available to see this video. And lastly, uh, hit that little bell, subscribe, like. If you hit the bell, you will be notified when new videos become available. Comment, share, and all the above. Today, I want to just go over an overview of the system I created called the Seven Phases of Financial Wellness. Now, there is a book also by that title that I have authored called The Seven Phases of Financial Wellness. And I'm basing on an overview of the book, which overviews the system that I created. And the, the system has seven distinct things that you do with money over the course of your life, over and over. And as you do these things, you will reach a level of financial wellness. Of course, the better you do them, the more financially well you are. And uh, the more you work at it, the better you're going to get. So, uh, disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor. I do not sell financial products like insurance or investments. I am here to give you uh, instructions on um, teachings and, and coaching you and, and what to do, what to look for, just to give you an overview. And um, then you link up with some of these professionals and you, and you implement some of these things. But uh, I'm here to give you an educational uh, for your information. Some people even say uh, entertainment purposes, but uh, you know, I, I just want to give you the information that you need to win, you know? And you can potentially, the sky's the limit. So without further ado, the seven phases of financial wellness are earn, Give, track, protect, save, spend, and enjoy. Now, I want to I want to say also, a lot of people say, "Oh, I'm good at finances. I don't need someone to teach me." There are three people or three groups of people that I believe can benefit the most from this system or from my book. Um, I believe anyone can benefit from it, but if Warren Buffett doesn't read it, I think he'll be okay. But the three groups of people that I think can benefit mostly from this system or from my book, number one are, and we'll just say, uh, the the young or people try to group them in um, you know in in an age category, but I would say thirty five and below. But some people say millennials, um, but that might not necessarily capture everyone. But if if you're beginning your financial journey, maybe thirty and below. And you're, you're really new to it. Maybe you're getting out of college or you're in high school and you, you're getting established. You need a system that you can follow that will propel you forward so you don't make the same mistakes as your parents, as the previous generation or as people are making right now. So you get ahead by doing that. So millennials, I'll, I'll just say millennials will benefit uh, drastically from following this uh, system. The next group of people 
are people who have current financial emergencies, 911, meaning you you are getting calls from bill collectors. You your credit score is is tanked because you can't afford to even pay the minimum on a lot of your debts or you are constantly running out of money by the end of the month. Some say you you have more month than money, which means that you need something to get you jump start you from where you are so that you can get out of that uh get out of the rat race, get off that hamster wheel of continually failing every month financially. And then the third group of people, actually people who think they don't need it, is the people who make good money, but they need assistance in managing that money. Now this group could be small or wide, bigger, big or tall, because a lot of people fool themselves into believing because they make a whole lot of money that they don't need help financially. But if we were to look at reality, look at even the newspaper, some of the headlines, this big star goes broke. This person who made a hundred million now works, you know, in a fast food store. Why do we have headlines like that? It's because people had a whole lot of money, but the rule, if you know anything, it's not necessarily how much you make, is how you manage what you make. Because we also hear the stories of the person who made $16,000 a year leaving $10 million to their heirs. You know, the person who was a, a immigrant and made, you know, pennies, scraping together pennies, and, and now is a multimillionaire. So the idea is to, 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 to learn the game and use the strategies that have made so many other people successful. And I believe after so many years of studying finances that I've narrowed did down to seven distinct things that you do. Now, I'm not going to overview the whole system. That's what the book is for. And, and you can go to my website of the same title, uh, www.the7phaseoffinancialwellness.com and, and get more information about how we can help you uh, grasp these, these principles, these, this system. And but I'm gonna just highlight some of the some 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 of the big things that uh, that jump out in the system, so that you can start your mind and think and, and think about it in your own finances. Are you doing these things? If so, if not, why not? And how well are you financially? And or rate yourself in each each of these these uh, phases, from one to ten. One meaning. You are very uh, inefficient and unproductive. And 10 meaning you're doing it, you know, to the highest degree. Now, if we say earn, vast majority of people, based on the statistics in the United States, the vast majority of people who are going to look at this video is probably uh, in the lower end of the scale in terms of what they could be earning. If the average in America is between 50 and 60, what I'm saying to you is look at the people who are in that 1%. What are they doing differently income-wise, earning-wise? And the number one thing that, that, that sticks out to me in my research is a multiple stream of income. Now, and when I when I say multiple stream, I don't mean necessarily multiple jobs because the, the 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 mistake a lot of people make in earning money is they want to trade more of their time for money. But the day is limited. There's only 24 hours, and you can't work all of them. But you can create a business 
that allows you to make money while you sleep. So look at different ways of earning money. Now, initial in the beginning, maybe you will uh, get more overtime. You will get a second job to maybe pay down some debt and to build up a little emergency fund. But that's not a long-term strategy because, you know, as you get older, you, you, you want to work less. You don't want to work more. But the idea is that your best income potential isn't based on these, but it's based on this, your brain. So think of ways that you can earn money that don't include you trading it for money. Maybe you start a business and someone else, you put them in place to do it. Maybe you write a book. Maybe you start, you know, some kind of online business. But the idea is that you concentrate on uh, not depending, wholly depending, getting so comfortable with that one income that you don't even pursue a second one. And if you're married, Try not to use both incomes to fund your lifestyle, but use that second income as a way of paying down debt and, and, and building wealth, investing and things of that nature. So, you know, multiple streams of income. So consider that. Now we look at earning, giving, giving. There's always someone else who can benefit from your generosity. If you've ever been in a situation where you needed something, you were glad that someone was in a, in a position to help you. But the idea is that giving actually makes you feel better in many ways. And there's always someone who can benefit from your generosity. There's always someone who needs help. It might start in your family. It might start in an organization you belong to. But... Get in the habit of helping someone else and you'll see how it, it makes your life better as a result of being unselfish to the point of helping someone else improve their life. Then we look at tracking. You have to know where your money is going. You have to know what's coming in, what's going out. Otherwise, you you stand the chance of, of dwindling money and wondering like, what happened to my money? And I'm going to tell you right now, one of the biggest wasters or drainers of your income is, is consumer spending with credit cards, especially if you're not paying your bill by the end of the month you're putting yourself in a hole that's going to be hard to dig out of. So, track your spending. Get a hold of what's coming in, what's going out. And you'll see just the result of, of putting together a budget. You're going, you, you might even give yourself a raise as a result. Because now you're going to see, oh, I used to spend this much money. Just track it for a month. Just even if you don't have electronic source, just take a little pen and pat, uh, paper, or pa a little pamphlet or something. And every time you spend money, write it down for a whole month and then look at it and then begin to put together a budget through, you know, various means that you can go into and, and, uh, and see what you're spending every month and adjust that monthly for the unique expenses of that month. All right. So so we talked about earning, giving, tracking, protecting, protecting num phase number four. It really boils down to two major things. It it may it builds down to debt reduction and insurance. You can't build wealth if every time you get something it is taken away because you didn't have the proper 
coverage or protection against your, your, your assets, right? And debt reduction, I, was, I said it in, just in the previous uh, phase about budgeting, those credit cards, you, you can't get ahead financially if you're earning, even if you're earning 15% on your, on your money, but you're paying 25, 30% on your money. See, the idea is we want to get into things that pay us interest and less things that we pay interest. That's how wealth is built, right? So protect with insurance, protect with minimizing debt, eliminating debt, at least debt that doesn't uh, produce an income for you. Because if you have a debt where the income is exceeding the debt, then to at very least, you're not going in to greater debt, right? But if you got a debt that you pay and no one else pays, that is that's a no-win situation, right? So we got earn, we got give, we got track, protect, save. A lot of people say savers or losers, but the idea is that what they really saying is you have to get in the habit of putting away some money. Once it gets to a certain amount, and once it exceeds your operating money that you need to pay your bills, once it exceeds the, the emergency fund that you, you should have so that when hard times come, you can handle your, your daily expenses, your monthly expenses for at least three months without, you know, going, uh, you know, without going crazy about how you're going to afford your lifestyle. So, but beyond that, your savings should, should begin to transfer into what most people call investments, stock market, real estate, businesses, so that your money begin to work for you on a greater level because right, right now banks, the interest rate is so low it's not even worth even mentioning because they're making big money and giving you very little in the form of interest. So save, get in the habit of putting away some money. Every time you, when you make a dollar, you put away a dime, right? I mean, I recommend giving and then, you know, then saving. So that's at least 20%. But then you invest. That's another 15. So now, now you got 35%. So you're living on 65, 75% of your income rather than 100. If you live lower than your means, you're always going to be able to get ahead because that means you're not spending more than you're making. And, uh, that's how you succeed. And then we talk about spending. Spending is should be done with wisdom in mind. Spend in a way that allows you to, to not buy or continue to buy things that decrease in value and, and things that have little quality. You know, a lot of people want to look flashy and look rich when they're not. When the, the, the fact of the matter is most rich people even look poor and poor people try to look rich, try to look like the people in the movies and things like that. But the average rich person, you can't look at them and tell, oh, they're rich. They'll have a nice house, more than likely. They'll have nice living accommodations, but they won't be flashy, right? So don't don't fall into the 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 trap of trying to be like the Joneses because you don't know that the Joneses are up to debt to their eyeballs and uh only one paycheck away from being homeless. So you know, love your life <laughs> and 
and uh, be the best that you can be, right? So spending, and, 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 and another big thing about spending is, you know, trying to uh, have sales resistance, you know? It's something to see something that you were looking for, something that you had your eye out for and you buy it, but to, to constantly have someone convince you that you need to buy something that you don't need is not in your budget, it's not in your goals, you know, it's hard for me because I sell things, but I'm selling you something that I believe can benefit you. And if you don't believe it can benefit you, then I guess you won't buy it. But if, you, if you're honest with yourself, you can look at your purchases you made and, 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 and I see it all the time. You know, a person will spend... A hundred thousand to go to a college and won't spend five for an instruction from someone like myself that can teach them how to grow their wealth. They'll spend three hundred dollars to go to a concert and the concert's over and the and the and the artist didn't give them anything, but they won't spend twenty dollars on a book that can change their life. And we have some mixed up priorities when it comes to spending. And if we don't get them right, we'll be a victim of, uh, of our spending instead of a victor of our spending. So I want you to have victory in your spending. So consider each purchase and, and think of it like this. What else could I buy that can benefit me instead of this purchase? And the big one, a lot of people fall into is cars. You buying this fancy car that in a few years won't be even worth half and you're still paying on it, right? Oh man, I know I can go off on a soapbox about a lot of things, but, and then I'm gonna I'm a close it out with the, le the seventh one, which is enjoy. Yeah, yeah, you should enjoy your money. You should enjoy. I mean, if you just making money to, to pay bills, you you're missing the point, you know? You should you should your income should provide joy, memories in your life. Good memories. You know? Enjoy and uh go on vacation, but set the money aside so that the vacation isn't turned to misery because you got to pay it off for the next three, five years. No, save it up. Put it in your budget to, to go on that vacation. Save up to buy that great bed. You, you're spending a third of your life in, in bed. Why not have a bed that you enjoy sleeping in? Save up by that beautiful painting that you're going to look at, right? So you should enjoy your money. But you shouldn't enjoy it so much that enjoyment turns into regret because you you you're in debt for the enjoyment that you're getting. And sometimes building memories doesn't involve spending a whole lot of money. Just just it means dedicating some time and in, in doing something special. So to wrap up the system, this earn. Give, track, protect, save, spend, and enjoy. These are the seven phases of financial wellness. Again, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Hit that like button. Hit the little bell so you'll be notified when new videos become available. Um, comment, share this video. And uh, I want to thank you for hanging on to the end. And I hope that financial wellness is your current or your future. And uh, look at the links below for more information on how we can help you on that journey. Thanks and God bless.